But position trading is where I have made the most money ever in trading. And it is one of the more relaxed styles of trading out there. Now what you're looking at here on this screen is you're looking at a chart that I actually position traded. I'll show you a picture of that here in just a second of the actual chart. But that was um, a trade that lasted years. And entry into that trade was the, the upper 60s. And I'll show you where I got shook out of the trade. But I ended up getting shaken out of this trade at nearly $220 a share. Tremendous potential profits in trades like this. But we have to give up this idea of all the micromanagement if we're going to take longer term trades. Now, longer term trades don't have to go years. They can just go a few months. They can go just a few weeks. A few weeks would be a big stretch for a lot of folks. They, they can't think beyond one or two day trades. But what we want is that little bit longer term position that gets us that one entry and that really nice potential trade. Now you can trade this with just stock, owning the stock, or you can trade these with option trades. Okay, and I'll show you, we'll talk about that as we go along here today. So I'm gonna jump right on to some charts here. Here's a good example of a chart. This is SQ. Everyone's probably traded SQ a bunch of times. You can see here in SQ, I've got this all marked up. And by the way, this is on a weekly, a weekly chart. And you can see how I've had this chart all kinds of, you know, markings on here trading this chart. And I want you to also view that these trades are not short term trades. If you entered a position here on um, SQ, let's say you entered um, in here, right on this move, you can see that is in May. And you might have been stopped out sometime over here in July. So really simple, easy trades to follow. And the technical analysis is really just exactly the same as you would do for your short term swing trading. How many of you feel like, you know, so much of the time, a big portion of your account is is just in cash. You're you're under invested in your account. And the reason you're under invested is because you understand that that really quick swing trading has more danger in it. So you don't invest much of your account into the market. So typically you're always way under invested in the market. Well, one of the ways you can solve that is looking for a few, you don't have to do a bunch of these, but looking for a few longer term trends, longer term trades. And the patterns here are identical to anything that we trade commonly in, in um, hit run candlesticks, right way options, and you know any other trend trading strategy. I essentially trade two patterns in the market. And that's no joke, I've built a career 14 years now, trading full time, supporting my family, trading basically two patterns on a chart that's this simple. Um, I call this a naked chart. I really wanna recommend everyone have at least one naked chart on their system. And this is the first place you go to take a look at trend, take a look at the price patterns. Just go do a, a independent study out there and find out what your eyes are more capable of seeing. And you're gonna find out it's black and white. I fought that for years. My mentor told me that. I fought it for years and years and years. Well, I have all these colors, let me use all the colors. In fact, I made my charts look so psychedelic. By the time I was done, I patted myself on the back for my ingenuity and all the clever stuff that I could do with a chart but it never made me any money. And when I cleaned things up and got simple in my trading, that's when things started to really change for me as a trader. It's what changed my life is getting simple, giving up the predicting and just learning to follow the trend. The two patterns that I basically trade are this. I look for a chart that's in a trend. Number one, guys, first thing first, trade a chart that's in a trend. It's the easiest thing. Don't try to pick the bottom, don't try to pick tops. Trade a chart that's trending. It's the easiest thing in the world to do. And it was, it was a statement that, that came to me when I was about ready to quit trading. 
and I was looking over charts and I thought how in the world could I be losing money when the market's trending like this and it suddenly hit me like a ton of bricks I was losing money because it was me I was messing it up I was doing all this stuff trying to predict and trying to be really fancy and all that kind of stuff instead of just following the trend and the simple truth is there's no easier way to make money in the market than just finding a stock that's proving it wants to go up or down and just waiting for the next entry and enter that position and let the trade work now why does this work so well it works so well because we as retail traders do not determine which way a stock is going to go the big institutions the big dollars are the ones who decide when a bottom is in on a stock or when a top is in on a stock and if we give up the idea of predicting we can see when they start to support a stock we don't have to predict anything all we have to do is follow if they're supporting the stock and the pressure is on that stock to move in a direction all we'd have to do is wait for our entry and follow it so the two patterns i basically trade is i find a chart that's trending stocks moving up i wait for the pullback to the trend and price support if there's price support in here all the better i only buy stocks that are at or near price supports one of my number one rules buy stocks at or near price support we call this in hit run candlesticks right away options the pullback opportunity a pbo and of course they can come in lots of different forms they can be a little bit choppy they can be very concise they can be all different kinds of things but what on, the only thing that really matters is that we see a buyer's reaction to price support or trend and we, what I mean by a buyer's reaction, we see that bullish engulfing candle. We see that, that morning star pattern. We see that kicker pattern that moves things in the opposite direction. We see something that confirms that the buyers are supporting that level. And it gives us right here our lowest risk entry into a trade. Because our stop loss on this, we could be wrong on this trade, but we don't risk much money because our stop loss is right underneath that level. The second pattern that I trade, stock moves up, consolidates over, and then I wait for the buy signal. 99% of my trades are those two patterns. And I trade them over and over and over. Okay? Now, in a swing trade chart, it works exactly the same obviously there's a lot more noise in a swing trade chart you get a lot more back and forth and a lot more whipping around and those kind of things in the weekly chart or if you use just a multi-day chart two or three day chart it 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 reduces some of the noise in that chart by the way this works identically the exact same way if you're a day trader and trade five minute charts it's the exact same thing every single time i show this over and over and over how simple it is to just follow the trend rather than try to predict it. So when you look at this chart right here, you can see what I'm talking about. Our trend, where does our trend begin on this chart? If we pull this back just a little bit more, I want to get a little more space in here. If we pull this back a little bit more, you can see up until this point in time, right here, we had no confirmation of trend. And why, why did we have no confirmation of trend? A trend begins with a higher low. That begins an uptrend. Yeah, that's right, Bob. This higher low confirmed an uptrend. There's our trend. Notice how that stock, for all of this time, used that trend all the way up. So you can see right here are the patterns. We move up, we consolidate over to the trend, and then buyers step in. We move up, consolidate over to the trend, and buyers step in over and over and over. So here's consolidations over. Here's pullbacks to the trend. Same pattern over and over and over. What we have to do as the trader is wait. We find this trend in place. We just have to wait for those buyers to step in. We have to wait for that buy pattern to occur so we can trade and follow this trend beautiful entry right there little weekly morning star pattern and i want you to notice that these trades whether you hold all the way through this or whether you swing back and forth in this longer term pattern all of these trades that i'm pointing out here are winners 
every single one of these are winning trades. And all we had to do was follow the existing trend. And that's why I love some longer term trading. So how do you go about doing, how do you go about finding some longer term trades? Well, first off, one of the things that you want to, um, a pullback, Francis, pullback, the pullback opportunity to the trend. So we have a trend, PBO. We have the pullback to the trend. I'm looking for those pullbacks to hold support. PBOs and consolidations. I call this a pop out of the box pattern, okay? If you guys wanna know more about pop out of the box, I can show you that and we'll talk about it um, and show you how easy it is to use, okay? It's a very simple, clean pattern to trade. So how do we go about finding these? Well, first thing is, is you, you have to slow down a little bit, okay? Traders, in, uh, nowadays I find they believe that the only way they can make money is go faster, 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 faster. I got to hurry, 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 hurry. I got to rush all the time. I'm here to tell you if you're rushing into your trades, you're making a big mistake. You should never feel the need to rush into a trade. You are making a business decision whether this is going to be a profitable trade or not. None, none, nothing about a business decision should mean rush to the trade. That's when you make mistakes. Go slow. Think about the position. Think about the risk. The, big, the biggest mistake you'll ever make in trading is hurt just running in, blindly rushing into a trade. You have to let the trade come to you. And that's what we're talking about here is just being patient, letting the trade come to you. So you can um, see these pink lines here. All, <laughs> I started changing all of my alerts to these pink lines so everybody could quickly identify them. I want you to understand that all of these lines back here, these were price alerts where I literally was waiting for the trade to come to me. I see the pattern, I mark an alert on the chart and I don't, I don't worry about it until that trade alerts. And it's when that trade alerts, I go take a look at that chart and I'm ready to trade it because I've prepared for it ahead of time. I know what the pattern is. I know the chart is trending. And so all I have to do is wait for the trade. So how do we find these trades? Well, one of the things that I do all the time, and you're going to, I'll show you this. And, and by the way, this is just one of the great benefits of TC2000. Um, I think it's one of the great benefits. And I'm just going to use the diamonds here for an example. If I bring up a diamonds chart and then I click right here, one icon, I can bring up an entire list of everything that's in the Dow. And then all I have to do is flip through these charts. Okay. Now you're going to see that these charts are marked up. They're marked up for a reason. They're marked up because I'm always looking for that next longer term trade. So you can see right here in CVX, I have identified a downtrend break. Price has broken through the downtrend. Now I don't chase into this move. Remember, I said we have to be patient. We have to wait for the entry into the trade. So the next step after this move after breaking the downtrend is for the stock to prove that it can hold here as support. Either with a pullback or a consolidation, it has to hold. It has to prove that they're gonna to continue to support that, not just pop through like we've seen up here, pop through and then turn right back around. Prove that you can hold. Once it proves it can hold, it gives me a pattern in here that I can trade. When you, when you flip through charts like this, you're going to find great patterns that are potentially setting up. Everyone see what's, sees what's going on here in Apple. Apple broke its downtrend, rallied up strongly, and is now right here. You can see that little pink line, that little pink line consolidating over toward its trend. By the way, I can't make that up. The trend was identified right in here, right? I can't make that up. Consolidated about three weeks over towards trend and now has started to move on up. Not that hard. And you can see all the way through here, that stock did exactly the same thing. Break the downtrend, hold it as support, buyer step in. Our trend is established and notice how that trend continued to work 
all the way up. So just following that trend, following that chart. So I do a lot of just looking through um, charts. And by the way, I'm not looking for $5 stocks, okay? Not looking for $5 stocks. I'm looking for, if I want to hold a stock for a period of time, I want a good solid stock, a stock that has good volume, consistency in its price action. I'm not going to be chasing around a biotech. Those are not meant for longer term trading. So you can do this with ETFs just as easily. You can use an, 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 um, an index ETF. You can use you know anything and do the same, uh, the exact same analysis here. So I'm looking for those stocks that are coming around, that are changing, that are turning into something, that are becoming something that they've they've overcome a downtrend. They've done something in here to prove a good price pattern. I'm going to show you a chart here in J&J, &J, and this is an older, I'm going to go back to an old drawing here. This is something that I look for all the time. I'm always looking for those big resistance zones. Notice that J&J &J was held down here for years. Years. These are years down here. And then look what happened when it broke out. Who wants to get into a trade where the stock goes for one, well, about three months? About three months, not one black candle. When you look for the big patterns like that, you look for big resistance areas. Those are the kind of moves that you make. I'm going to show you a recent trade. I mentioned to everyone on Lily this massive breakout that was coming here. Okay, that's the weekly chart. I found this trade on the weekly chart. Look at these big pullbacks. The first higher low, there's the trend. There's no big trick here. So I saw this great big resistance zone up here. I went to the daily chart and right there, you guys can see that pink line. Right there was the first alert on Lily to break us through that big resistance zone up there. And I want you to see what happened after that occurred and what's still going on right now. I think there's a problem coming in Lily here soon, guys, uh, just by the way. See this big volume bump right here? I think it's reaching an exhaustion point. But there's my point. Good, an old, boring company not in the news, never in the news, except earnings days, and massive potential returns in a trade, okay? Massive potential returns in a trade. And it's, if you wanna trade this with options, all you have to do is enter your option trade. Let me give you a couple of rules that we use in right way options and rules that I follow like a religion. Okay, if I'm going to enter an option position on Lily here, I'm always going to be buying an option somewhere between 70 and 80 deltas. Okay, now that doesn't mean if I've got a 69 delta that I won't take a 69 delta, particularly if it's a longer term trade. Okay, if I'm planning this as a longer term position, I'm going to be looking out there five, six months plus in time for the option. Okay, I want to give enough time to take advantage of this trade. Now, here's something that I think is really, really important, guys, because a lot of people think when you get into this long-term trading ideas that you never take profits. I have to take profits. I make a living from this. So if I enter a long-term option position here, when that 70 delta option rolls up to somewhere around 90 deltas, I wait for the next entry setup into the trade, and then I close this trade and look for another 70 delta option taking a profit. So I'm always looking to take profits. Long-term trading doesn't necessarily mean you do it without ever taking a profit. If you do this with stock, if you're following that big trend, this thing moves up, take some profits, wait for the next entry into the trade and do it again. Or scale in and scale out. 
take a position here. Let's say you go in with 500 shares here. By the time it's up here, you're down to 200 shares in the trade. So it all depends on the time frame that you're that you're trading. But when I'm trading that longer term position, scale in and scale out of the trade. You have to take profits. If you don't take profits, there's too much pressure that builds up on the trade. And anybody that says that they held one position for, you know, it went from zero to forever, either you're Warren Buffett or you're lying to me because the pressure on that trade gets too big and you, you better take some profits. You better scale out. Um, and B, yeah, if I'm, if I'm scaling out of a trade, um, or are rolling rolling my delta position I'm usually rolling it up and out so meaning I'm adding more time you have to look at the option contracts you never know what's the perfect I know everyone wants to say well now you you know you, you scale out now you look three months from now and buy another R70 delta option that's not the way it works you have to go into the option contracts and look for that next position I have to give it enough time Remember, we're looking at weekly candles here. I have to give it enough time to move like we expect it to move. If we buy too short a time on the option position, we're going to fail in the trade because the theta will get to us before we ever get a chance to make much money on the trade. So you've got to give it some time. Now, here's something that I always run into when I talk to people about doing this. They say they get they get addicted to the really cheap option. Well, I can buy I can buy a 45 day option and it's and it's only going to cost me three dollars and twenty cents. If I go out to the to the leap option, the January 2020 option, I'm going to have to pay nine bucks for the trade. I I can't do that. We just talked about the fact that your account is probably underinvested. Okay, as long as you can make. A trade like that and keep it under about three to four percent of your account size your overall account size holding a few longer term positions in the long run will help you out because these will build great big profits in them at times and then in your swing trading, if you have a bad day in swing trading, it's really not so bad when you have trades over here with lots of, of profit in them. And this stuff isn't abnormal. We did this in right way options on a trade in Microsoft. Let's see. There is the entry right there. Notice that's the same pattern I always talk about. Stock had pulled back finally proved itself and we ended up entering this trade here on the weekly we entered that in December 2016 we ended up getting called away on the trade clear over here in August of 2017 we made a 99% return on the trade 99% return on the trade the only reason we ended up out up here is we got called away. We'd sold a call option against the position, got called away. We'd made so much money on the call option, I didn't want to buy it back. But we ended up trading this move a little bit later. Pretty simple stuff, just following those big trends. And those simple stocks, they're boring stocks. They're the stocks that nobody seems to want to care about anymore. They're the ones that are stable. They're just setting up these really nice trends. Okay, that chart that I showed on the first graphic was BDX. BDX. Here's the weekly chart. There was my entry into BDX. Consolidation right here that had lasted almost two years. And notice the rising lows the entire time for years and years and years. This thing was under massive pressure to move up. 2013, I got shook out of the trade over here, okay? So I'm in this trade right in here and out this trade up here. Now guys, I don't want you to think that this is something abnormal. These charts are everywhere. These charts are all over the place. You just have to look for them, okay? And one of the things that's happened um, in you know, today's day and age with all the instantaneous information and stuff, we've forgotten that there are great longer term trades. 
For example, in here, you would not necessarily have to trade this and hold it all the way through. I know I didn't. I hold held pieces of it all the way through, but I was in this trade and I took profits in this trade. I added some in the trade. I sold off part of the trade. I waited for the next entry into the position and I just continued to trade this trend, okay, all the way up. The last piece that I had, I get, like I said, I was shook out over here. When I say these trades happen all the time, they really do. Look at this Disney run. This was a four year run in, in Disney. Look what's happening right now in Disney. I'm sorry for all these lines up here. I'm gonna switch this chart. Um, you guys see what's going on here in Disney right now? Now, I will not assume that this will make a four year run if this breaks out of here and continues to move up. But I will assume after a multi-year breakout, we're gonna have a substantial move higher if it can make that move. So it's happening all the time. We just have to retrain ourselves a little bit to look for that bigger, bigger trade. Now, a couple things, a couple things. What's an easy way to find these trades? An easy way to find these trades as well, doing what I just showed you, is just pulling up a list of charts, uh, pulling up an index list of charts and going through and marking them up and looking at the big picture. And by the way, there's that's not wasted time. Okay, if you find this happening in a long-term trade, looking at a weekly chart, this has occurred right in here. We're moving up held support starting to move on up in a trend can you just switch to the daily chart and swing trade that yes it's not wasted time it's good time to be spent because it helps you see the bigger picture of the of the stock of the trend of the market okay so whether you trade these with stock trades or option trades it's not wasted time it's a good exercise and i do this every week I'm looking for the big trade all the time. I'm looking for the big picture. So don't don't look at looking at weekly charts as just a big waste. If you start marking out big things like this, I, can you see I got to do here is just wait. You just got to be patient. That's the hardest thing about doing this is the patience to wait for the trade. Like Munger said, it's not in the buying and the selling. It's in the waiting. It's in the waiting where the big profits are. Okay, <clears throat> so. Just going through and looking at charts and marking them up is one great way of doing it. Another really simple way is to, I'm gonna go over here, is to take that longer term chart and just use a moving average crossover, okay? You can see I've got a 17 EMA on here. By the way, the 17 EMA works really good on the longer term trends. See this period right in here? That's 17 works really quite well. That's a 17 EMA moving average. It tells us when the downtrend is over. Tells us when the downtrend is over and buyers have started to pick it back up. Tells us when the downtrend is over and the buyers start to pick it back up, okay? So if you want some help in running a scan to try and find these, <laughs> um, Steve just, just mentioned the eight um, on here, is take an eight exponential moving average and look for the eight crossing above the 34. I mean, crossing above the 17. That eight crosses above the 17. It gives us an early entry, an early idea. Doesn't mean that that is a trade. I want everyone to understand, okay? A moving average cross is not a trade signal. A moving average cross brings you to a chart that might have a trade in it. We still have to evaluate the price action and wait for the next entry into the trade, okay? So you use an eight against a 17 and just run a scan, and you're gonna find, if you, if you do it on the weekly, or if you do it on a three-day chart or something like that, you want a little bit longer, just not real long, you wait for that cross to occur, you wait for the next entry into the trade and then just follow the trend. As you can see right in here, eight crosses over 
buyer step up in here, popping through that little resistance right there, that's sometime here in 2011. And that went over to here to October, November. One trade, October from January to October. One trade. Okay, that's an easy way, other than just going through and looking at charts, it's an easy way to bring you to a chart that could be setting up. And that's the operative word, could be setting up. Okay, and then we wait for the next entry into that trade. All right, now I saw a question went through, what do you do on trades like this around earnings? I mean, I showed you how we did it and how we traded uh, Microsoft, right? And we traded that with a long-term option. Microsoft, whoops. Microsoft trade was a leap option. Okay, there was our entry. Microsoft was a leap option. Notice that's not even the tightest entry, not even the best entry. Didn't matter, we still made 99%. So how do we do that? Well, you want to enter those trades and let some profit build into the position. If you enter a long-term thinking trade and earnings is just a couple of weeks away, you're probably making a mistake, okay? Because you don't have enough time to really build any profit into the trade. This is what I do on an option position, and it's what I do on a stock position as well. I wait until pretty close to earnings and I make a de determination. Do I still want to hold this trade? Is the trade continuing to look very stable, very strong? Do I want to hold the risk in this trade? So you have a choice. You can just take the profit. What I typically do, if I see a good pattern, the trend is still really good, is then I'm going to buy a front month option, put option to protect the trade. Okay, so say for example, if you have in this trade, if you have, you know, $2,000 in profits in this trade, okay, current profits being held a couple grand. If you go to the front month put, and why do I use the front month put? I use the front month put because I avoid the big um, implied volatility spike on those really short term options. I don't want that big implied volatility spike. I want that 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 option that is it's probably elevated a little bit implied volatility, but it's not that big massive implied volatility spike. Okay? And I'm going to buy a put. I'm going to buy a put to put a stop loss in that trade to cover the position. Okay? If the stock moves against me, I can exercise my put, sell my sell my stock or get out of my position at the price where I protected it. The ins it's an insurance policy. Enough to cover the position, Richard. I mean, if you have a thousand shares, you're gonna need 10 puts, right? If you're gonna cover the whole position. Or you can do a combination of those. You could sell half of the trade, right? Take a thousand dollars profit and then cover the other half with your put, okay? Cover the other half and make sure it's protected for that earnings event. Stock moves down, you can exercise your put, close out your trade, you protected your profit. Okay? Stock moves up. You are right. Stock, the, the continuation of the trend is still there. The stock moves up. What do you do? Next morning or after the earnings event, go in, close that put option. You lost some money on the put option. But what you lost on the put option was made up in the move, okay? So you paid a little insurance cost to protect the position. The loss that occurs here will be very close to being made up by the increase in the, in the price of the stock. So you're protecting your position in the trade. Now I'm going to do the same thing when I own stock. Let me give you an example. Current trade, long-term hold that I have right now. Some of you are gonna look at this and say, what in the world is he doing? <clears throat> Everyone in right-way options knows this. 
I told everyone I was buying a long-term position in Walmart right here on that candle. I am still, and by the way, I bought the stock. I am still holding the stock of Walmart. So I am still holding this position in Walmart. I own the stock. All the way up, I've sold call options against it. As a matter of fact, all the way up, everyone knows this in RWO, all the way up, when I see a good buy entry, I buy a shorter term option trade to enhance the position. I'm selling covered calls against this trade, bringing more profit to the position. Now, when you look at this chart, you go, what a mess this has been right through here. And it has, it's been a terrible mess. Why would you hold that? So if you don't like the way I traded it, fine. What I'm trying to show you is it can be done. You may choose and say, hey, I, I don't, I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna hold through that, perfectly fine. So you trade your trade. If your trade tells you that, hey, up in here, I gotta blow out of this trade, I'm not gonna be in it. I'm telling you if I traded this with options, I would have been out up here. I'm holding the stock. So I knew holding the stock, I have no expiration to worry about. I'm going to go ahead in this trade and I'm going to continue to hold this position and I'm gonna sell covered calls against it and I'm gonna to continue to bring money to the trade the whole time. And by the way, I traded some puts in here as well to enhance the trade. So you trade your trade. And you follow your rules. But what you need to do is settle down. You know, brokers don't like to tell you this. Not many, not many people like to tell you this. Do you know the most profitable trading strategy out there? Requires the least amount of work, the least amount of equipment, it's position trading. Yeah, it's position trading. That is the number one profitable position trading style in the market. But brokers don't like to tell you that. Brokers want to encourage all the quick day trading, the scalping and all of that kind of stuff. And that's okay if you like it. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just telling you. When you're doing that, when you're scalping, when you're doing all that stuff, you're very underinvested in the market. You're missing out on the big trends. You're missing out on the big money that's out there. So if you want to continue to do that and just in and out and in and out and in and out, generating tons and tons of commissions for a few pennies here, hundred bucks here, hundred bucks there, no problem. But why not have some longer term trades? that are putting in those really big numbers at the same time. That's all I'm talking about here. I'm not talking about changing anything up. I'm not talking about telling you that you have to change what you do. Do what you do. I'm just giving you an avenue and showing you that you can make really big money following simple trends. Okay, and it's not that hard. It doesn't require a whole lot of time and attention you can do this from a laptop looking at the looking at uh, the market maybe twice a week it doesn't require micromanagement of the position just let the trend continue to work okay take a look at 3m here always like to leave everybody with an idea and not that I'll, I'll stay and answer questions, but leave folks with an idea. And I've brought this up to right way options, folks. Do you guys see what's happening here in 3M? 3M breaking its longer term downtrend. Notice it's trying to consolidate and hold that support. The support right in here, the support 
of the downtrend. I'm waiting for the entry into 3M. I need some more long-term positions in this choppy market that we've had here the last year. Um, I, you know, a lot of my long-term positions have kind of dried up and gone away. And so I'm looking for that next move like that in 3M. Now, I don't know if that'll occur, but what I do know is it could be setting up. There's that eight crossing over the 17. Now we wait for the next entry into the trade. We've had the first move up. What do I need to confirm a trend? I need proof of a higher low and then a buy signal. I don't know where it will be and I don't know when it will be and I don't know what it'll look like if it does occur. But I know I can wait for it. And I know that if you do, it can pay massive profits. Mike T, uh, uh, an account of 10,000, you're gonna have to be, <clears throat> you know, you're gonna have to be really, really picky about the trade that you take and you're probably going to have to trade um, substandard positions. And what I mean by that is you won't be trading, um, you know, you could trade um, one or two long-term options um, but you're not going to be buying the stock unless you buy just a few shares of it because it, it puts too much pressure um, on your account. Remember, my rule, and this is a rule that I stick with, no more than 3 to 4% okay, of my account, and it's usually closer to 3%. I have to be really confident in the market to put 4% into a trade. So it's usually closer to here. Um, Richard, um, a saying that I say all the time is dance with the one that brought you. So if you come to a longer term trade on a weekly chart, manage it on a weekly chart. Don't try to micromanage it with the, with the dailies or anything that will shake you out of a trade. You won't be able to hold the longer term position if you do that. Manage it by the chart that brought you to the trade. So, for example, if you happen, let's say I don't want to do a full weekly, maybe you want to do a three-day chart. Um, you know, three-day charts can work out great just as well. You can see right in here, there's that same price move on a three-day, then manage it by the three-day. Okay, whatever brings you to the chart, manage that chart. Um, why would a weekly trend be any different than a daily trend holding, a lo holding an option? Mike, you just buy a longer term option. Okay, I'm in a trade right now on NVIDIA. That I've already hedged. Um, I've already decreased my um, cost in this trade by a couple of options and we've done that here in Rightway here recently. Um, did it on Friday where we did another hedge trade in this. We've already brought money into this position. Okay. I'm holding a June contract. I'm in AMD based on this weekly chart. Break the downtrend. Hold it as support. Buyer step in here. I'm holding this trade with a January 2020 contract. Okay, so I hold those trades just the same way and I'm gonna manage this trade just the same way. Do you guys see that this pattern right here is really not much different than this pattern right here? Move up, consolidates over, buyer step in. Move up, consolidates over, buyer step in. Same pattern. Move up, consolidates over, buyer stepped in here. Now we've had this little shake in the market. Can it move up from here? Absolutely. Why couldn't it? Broke its downtrend and it's holding it. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. All right. But I'm following the same trade pattern that I trade all along. I never enter a trade without a stop. You always use stops. You always have to understand the risk that you're taking in the trade. Just because you go long term doesn't mean that you just throw all the rules out and, and blindly just throw money at the market, right? 
you have to dig in and look at the price pattern of the chart, plan that trade, understand the risk, make sure the risk is acceptable before you enter any trade. And let me repeat that, before you enter any trade, long term, short term, it doesn't matter. Plan the trade, know the risk and understand it before you enter the position. Okay, so I'm in this trade. I'm, I'm in this position. Am I comfortable in this position yet for a long-term position? No. I have, to, I have to have focus on this trade, right? I can't just I can't just chase into this blindly. I have to have a focus on this trade because early on in the position, I don't have a cushion of profit. Okay? Once the trade moves for me and gives me a nice profit in the trade, then I can really kind of relax. Okay? Stock has to give me that move first. It hasn't given me that move yet. Okay? If I start building this in here with huge profits in the trade, and when I say huge profits in options, they can easily be um, 70, 80, 100%. then you can relax a little bit in the trade. But until that occurs, you still have to stay on top of this, right? You can't just forget about it. You need to have your stop loss in here. You need to be watching this trade, okay? But after it starts to build that profit, now you can just take a breath and relax and just let the trade work at that point because you've built in a profit on the trade. You can even relax your stop loss. Give the chart more room to move back and forth because you got a nice profit in the trade. All right. Now, one of the things you guys see me do all the time, and I've done it in AMD, did it in, did it in, um, in, um, we entered that trade. The trade moved up a little bit, and what did I do? We entered the position. The trade moved up a little bit. What did I do? I went out and I sold March call options out of the money. I put in a covered call. Other, It's a covered call, but on an option trade, they call it a fig leaf. Or a, if you're thinking long term, they call it a fig leaf. It's actually more of a, a diagonal or a just a simple debit spread. Okay, so I sold the March contracts. We rolled that trade yesterday. Okay, because the stock gapped up, the market gapped up on us. All of these stocks moved higher. So I took advantage of that move. On the AMD trade, I closed the March 27 calls, okay? Closed this trade, took an 82% gain on that trade. And with the gap up yesterday, I was able to sell the April 26 calls and bring in additional profit into the trade and hedge the overall trade. So am I being careful with this trade right now? Yeah, I'm doing everything I can to protect the position. I'm bringing in capital, okay? I've already deuced, reduced the cost of this trade by about a dollar and a quarter because of these sold strikes. So am I managing the trade? Yes, absolutely. I'm paying attention to the position. I'm watching what's going on here. Now I can relax a lot of that after the stock moves. If I get the stock to move up into here, pull back, hold the support level, buyers come back in, that trend gets really well established, <clears throat> now I can relax. I still wanna manage it, but I don't have to watch this thing as closely, right? I'll let the stock move up again. I'll sell some more calls against it out of the money. 
<clears throat> continue to bring money into the trade. And by the way, I do that. You guys see me do that all the time. I let the stock move up first. It moves up first. Then I sell the calls. Because I get more for my calls and I get them further out of the money. So in all likelihood, we know how a trend works, right? It moves up and it pulls back or it moves up and consolidates. So I let it move up. And then while it's pulling back or consolidating, I'm getting paid to wait by selling those options out of the money. One of my best, best trades of all time, highest profitable trades of all time. Um, can't, I don't have the marks on the chart anymore. But it was somewhere back in here, taking a leap option on the trade trading calls against it it was one of those stocks that was just moving very deliberately it wasn't flipping around it's not in the news you know it's just just moving very deliberately sold covered calls against it kept rolling my long-term option overall profit in that trade was well over 250 percent okay that was one of my biggest profitable trades of all time Okay, because it just worked out so smoothly and easily following that trade up. Okay, this is where you can put together, guys. This is where you can put together those 10, 15, 20, 25,000, 30,000, even more in profits in your account by just letting the trade work. It only takes one or two of those to really make for a great year or two in trading, right? So you don't have to rush into these trades and don't think that you're going to find a good long-term trade today and just fill up five, five positions of long-term trades, you know, over the next week. You're not going to do that. It takes time, just like anything else, time to build those positions in. Well, 2017 was easy on anything. Didn't matter what you did. You could break all the rules in the book and make money in 2017. But we all know that's not a normal market, right? Those things occur very few times. Oh, well, they've, they've occurred very few times over my lifetime, okay? The majority of the time, the market is like this. It's challenging, okay? And challenging markets are good times to have some long-term positions or longer-term positions because it buffers that daily swinging back and forth. Looking at that chart price action, where do you think my stop loss is going to be? If my entry was because of this bounce off of support, where do you think my stop loss is gonna be on that chart? Where's the support in this chart? I, I, guys, I, I, I have never ever changed the way I do this. I have never been ambiguous about this stuff. So where's my stop loss? Below that support. Not at the support. It's below that support. Because I want to let the stock, if it has to come back and test this again to bounce off of it, I want it to do it. Intel. Intel definitely has potential for the longer term. Um, you can see I've got this thing all marked up. Um, let me shut off these moving averages here. I usually don't leave moving averages on my on this chart. Um, I try to keep my chart very, very clean so I can look at the price action itself without all the distraction. Okay, so when you take a look at Intel here, you can see that Intel's broken through this resistance, right? We had a nice pattern in here. That nice W pattern moved up. Here's our first higher low in the trend, but it needed to break this downtrend, okay? So now that we've broke that downtrend, we move up here, what do we do now? Well, now we wait for the next entry into the trade. Whether that's a consolidation over the trend or a pullback or a test of this support, we wait for the next entry into that trade 
And then, yes, I think, I think Intel is all kinds of setting up for that longer term trade possibility. And you can see in the past, Intel can make these really great moves. All right, so now that if this establishes itself out here as a good entry position, then yes, Intel could be a long-term hold position. But we wait for the trade. We don't, we don't try to speculate, we don't try to gamble, we don't chase. You know, one of the biggest mistakes I run into when I work with people individually on their coaching is we we chase we get caught up in this this fear of missing out we see this stock racing up here and our first inclination is oh my gosh i'm missing it and we jump in only to suffer the pullback i did that for years guys it cost me so much time and money i can't even i hate to even think about it But remember, we need the confirmation, right? What if this turns right around? We've seen that before too, right? Turns right around and comes right back down. Well, then it's shame on us because we chased into the trade. We have to wait for the next entry into the position. And by the way, if you wait for the pullback or the consolidation, what happens to the volatility when you, by the time you enter that trade? If it pulls back or consolidates over to the trend, you're usually buying it at a low volatility point, not a high volatility point. <clears throat> That's a, certainly a problem with folks who chase with, with options, is they chase that option and they happen to catch, you know, kind of the double whammy there. Okay. Hey, if you're a scalper and that's how you make your money, don't change. Be a scalper, but maybe consider adding some longer term positions. If you're a swing trader, don't change that. In fact, keep up your, your skills, okay, in identifying and reading the price action for swing trades, but just slow it down a little bit. Take a look at a weekly chart. See what you can do with that bigger trend to add in a position or two every now and then and build maybe a portfolio of two, three, four, five longer term holds. You never know which one of them is going to pay off the biggest. You never know which one's going to go, you know, for three months or for three years. You don't know. All you have to do after you enter it, though, is just relax and manage the trade. Don't micromanage the trade. Manage it by the chart that you found the trade on. Okay? And then just stay with the position. Now, for option traders, I understand, you know, when you have to make that, you're used to paying those cheap options in that really quick type um, situation. It's a little bit of a different change over to think about buying that longer term option. It costs more money. Okay? Cost more money, but if you think about it logically, it doesn't really matter if you're looking at that longer term trade. It's still tremendous leverage on that longer term position, and it can make phenomenal profits. But if you if you struggle, if you constantly find yourself going to the daily chart trying to micromanage it and i see this all the time in swing trading too guys you buy a good you buy a good daily candle on a swing trade and then you're trying to micromanage it by the hourly and the four hour and and you're killing yourself doing it look at your account it's proven to you it's not working you over micromanage this you you stay too focused to the hard right edge you don't pay attention to the overall chart or the pattern of the chart and you're missing out you're not giving yourself the opportunity that's there because you're so laser focused here. We'll, we'll enter a trade on right way options and literally the first time it wiggles lower, I get questions, are you still in the trade? Because the only thing they're focused on is the hard right edge. They're watching that candle wiggle around intraday. Guys, that's a waste of time. You're wasting your opportunity as a trader. When you're in a trade, plan the trade, set the stop, let the trade work, and then do your job. Find the next trade. 
If you're wasting your time watching that thing wiggle around, you're missing out on all the opportunities around you. Over micromanagement has become such a terrible problem for traders that they're making their own losses occur because they're not letting the trade work. Is there anyone here, here that would, would, would admit that, that you sell a position right before the stock moves up? And it's almost worse psychologically when that happens, isn't it? You entered that position, you maybe chased into it or something, the stock pulls back a little bit, you panic, you close the trade, you look back the next day or two and the stock is way up. And you go, come on, again? That's not the market's fault, guys. That's, that's our fault as traders. And I'll tell you the number one reason that occurs. The number one reason that's happening to so many people in the market is they're not planning their trades. Someone said this is a trade and they pile in. They don't even think about the risk. They don't know what the risk is. They overtrade the position. They do all of these stupid mistakes. And then the, the moment it pulls back, oh my gosh, because they don't take the time to plan the trade. I'm going to say this again. I said it at the beginning. If you ever feel rushed to get into a trade, you're making a mistake. You should never feel rushed to get into a trade because you will make a mistake. And the rushing itself is a mistake because you won't take the time to properly plan. You won't take the time to understand the risk of the trade that you just entered. And that is the number one reason why people are micromanaging these things because they have no plan. They don't know what they're doing with the trade. They don't know what the total risk to their stop loss is. They may not have even set a stop loss. And consequently, they're always subject to emotion in the trade. There's no, there's no business sense in it at all. Think, think about that for a second. Are you being that tough boss? Or are you continuously subjecting yourself to poor decisions because you're trading emotionally, not trading as a business? You have to settle down and you have to slow down and you have to work at being more mechanical in your trading. It doesn't matter if it's short term. It does, it, I don't care if you're a day trader. If you're, um, if you're a futures trader, if you're a Forex trader, it's all the same, guys. The chart, the price action, it's all the same. But if you're not doing the job, and the job is fi finding that trade, finding that trend, waiting for the entry, planning that trade, understanding the risk before you enter. And what happens when you find a trade that the risk is too much? It's a beautiful setup, but the risk in the trade is too much. What do you do? You find another trade. That trade is not for you. You find another trade. I find trades like that almost every single day. Trades that have great setups, good, good everything, and I look at the chart and I look at the risk and I say, I can't take the trade. It's too much risk. Not gonna take it. Almost every day I find those. But it's my job to determine the risk and the plan and how I hold to my set of rules. And if you start breaking those, if you don't have those rules, if you're just rushing all the time. And by the way, I've learned this from experience, guys, because <laughs> um, early on, early on um, in my trading, um, I made these mistakes. I, I was constantly, I, I felt like at the end of the day, someone, I, I had just gone like, 15 rounds with Mike Tyson. I was exhausted. And all I did is I felt like I rushed all day long. I was just, I couldn't keep up. And you know what I was doing? I was chasing everything. Chasing, chasing, chasing. Everything that popped in the market, man, I was chasing it. Didn't have a plan, didn't, boy, just got hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, get that, oh man, look, that thing popped up. Never once considering the risk. Chasing, chasing, chasing. And guess what? For about 15 of those years, I stunk up the place as a trader because I finally started to build an account 
and went full time 14 years ago. Been trading about 30 years now. And I'll tell you exactly what my mentor told me. I went and sat down with her. I was struggling. I was frustrated. I went and sat down with her. This is a person who had never had a job her entire life. The only thing she'd ever done is traded. Okay? She was the original one that originally taught me what to do. So I'm struggling. I'm frustrated. I finally get a chance to go meet her. This is back where I would actually drive to her place and we'd sit down and, and she'd say, okay, let's take a look. Uh, where did you enter this trade? And I would say, well, somewhere around here. Okay. Okay. Where's your stop loss? Well, somewhere around here. Or the one that would really tweak her is, well, it was just a mental stop right in this area. And we did that for several charts and went through several of those. And you know, she didn't say you're fired, Thomas. She looked at me and she said, Doug, I didn't think you were stupid. That's exactly what she said to me. Doug, I didn't think you were stupid. You couldn't have hit me harder with a two before. Because she was right. I was screwing it up. I knew the rules. I wasn't following them. I knew what I was doing was wrong. But I continued to do it. Repeating the same thing over and over, hoping for a different result. And she was exactly right. I wasn't doing, I wasn't following any of the guidelines. I was trading emotionally. I was chasing everything. And it cost me years and lots and lots of money. <clears throat> when you settle down, when you slow down, when you focus, when you put a plan together, when you trade that plan, trading becomes a lot easier, guys. It really does. It becomes a lot easier. Whether it's a short-term trade, a long-term trade, it becomes a lot easier. Because there is no rush. We know that if a market is going to run up and you happen to miss a trade, say this pulls back and you miss it and it takes off up here, do you chase that? No. You wait for the next entry into the trade. These trends, I've shown you trends like SQ and Microsoft and stuff that can go for long periods of time. If you miss an entry, wait for the next entry. Follow the rules. Be disciplined. If you find an entry that looks great but the risk is too much, wait for the next entry. It might be better. You don't have to rush. You don't have to chase. The market will be here tomorrow and it'll be here the day after that. Wait for the better trade. Be more diligent. Be the tough boss. Be that boss that walks over and looks over your shoulder at, at your trading desk and says, now why did you do that? And it will improve your trading. I promise you that if you stop the rushing and the micromanagement.